And the, at no point when they scored that try at the end do I think the Tigers were going to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm watching Paul Madge and like, I just feel bad for him at this point. Like yeah. I'm watching, I'm watching that game going, I don't care. I've got no um, uh, invested interest in this game. I couldn't care less who wins out of the Titans and Tigers. After watching the first three rounds, I don't think either are going to be a genuine contender. So it's like, not like it matters. I was like, Tigers going to lose this game for sure. <laughs> and there was like this is 90 long. seconds to go when they were up. And then I think, did they... Is this round five? Did they take that penalty? Did they take... Was well, oh, this round five? Yeah. <laughs> they got another 20 rounds to go, bro. Fuck. YKTR Sports Nation, welcome back to the greatest podcast this side of Mars. As always, we are brought to you in the Body Science Content Studio. Shout out for BSC for repping the boys. They've just dropped a new product, the Low Carb Mousse. All you got to do is put a little bit of powder in it, put a little bit of water, throw it in the fridge, mix it up, and you're away. You've got a nice healthy dessert available in Chemist Warehouse now too. Also, this podcast is brought to you sorry, by, by Steady Freddy. Get 50% off the code with the code YKTR50 for a better fucking world. <laughs> No, no, spray no, no. on and play on their amazing delay spray is a doctor created premature ejaculation solution without pills or Woo! toxins it's easy to apply and created specifically for those who want a convenient not an intrusive way to last longer for a better fucking world all right guys use that code yktr15 for 15 percent off um and give yourself an extra 50 minutes in the bedroom so that. appreciate that that's pretty steady too look at that nice steady and, freddy what's nice up baby steady, nice and steady there baby oh hey, hey, here's the combination G the missus up during the day, a few ticks is out. Get the steady for my anniversary today too. Baby. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, Happy yeah. anniversary thank to you, the scope and noosh. Thank you very much. How many times do you reckon you've said noosh this year? Uh, what's Tw- what, give me an over and unders and uh, I'll put some money on it. 20 a day? Over? Yeah, minimum. Especially like when I say it to her too and noosh your baby when I get home. <laughs> on, your baby. All right, back into the sports show. Um, mm. been, I've really enjoyed football this year. We're going to go roll straight into three of the best. Ponga reportedly, sorry. Can I roll more girls first? We've get got a, that in here. Oh, lovely. The sorry, boss. I just didn't want to make sure I uh, didn't uh, forget it again like last week. My we'll, bad. We've got there. Uh, three of the best. Ponga reportedly on the verge of rejecting the Dolphins offer in favour of a long-term extension with the Newcastle Knights. What's your thoughts on this? That's massive. Massive for Newcastle if they can uh, pull this off. Uh, yeah. The, the fact that, I don't know, maybe... Because are they still... Are they, are they allowed to be talking to him at the moment? Because there was another report that apparently he reached out... To the Dolphins? To the Dolphins and, and asked for a a sit down and chat like with his contract the way it's a little bit different than the normal ones where he's coming off because he's got the option I don't think it would be in, an, in the NFL terms they call it tampering mm. uh, I would imagine it would be the same sort of thing clubs it's a bit of an etiquette system I, I suppose that goes on with those sorts of things but if KP can if Newcastle can hold on to KP it's massive for Newcastle because if he leaves I, I feel like there's, there's some tough years you reckon you know, with regards to yeah yeah, like, as well as they went without him during that period, there's always that, like, Turbo is going to miss a few weeks now. Even though it's a few weeks, it's different to when, like, they're out for the season. Like, you just know, boys, come on, let's buckle down, win a couple of games. Depending on how long a certain star player is out for, just say if it's four in your head, you probably don't say it out loud, you want to win all four games. But realistically, if you knock two out of four with your big dog out, you know, your highest paid player... Um, that's a good result, and that's what Knights did. Why KPs? They they, they managed to snag a couple of ways out. Um, um, he's still finding himself at Newcastle, but it'll be massive if they can hold on to him. If if Redcliffe can sign someone like a Cameron Munster in the next couple of weeks, and obviously we're just speculating right now, does that make Redcliffe a bit more enticing for someone like KP? I tell you what, this is the position. If I was in there, so you know how I always revert back. I love my NFL, love my NBA. They say that deals get done for the following season, All Star Weekend. So, like, Kyrie and, and KD get together at the All-Stars. They're playing the same All-Star team, and they go, fuck, what's going on? I reckon if you, with this in particular, because this is a very unique situation at Redcliffe, this is, you know, where there hasn't been a, uh, a team brought into the competition since, what was the last one, Melbourne Storm or Gold nah, Coast Titans? Gold Coast Titans, 2007. Titans. Yeah, Titans coming in. Um, if I'm KP or Cam Munster, and like I said, you know, we've got relationships with the boys. We don't, they don't tell us any of this shit. I'm, I'm, if I'm KP, I'm not going out with Munster. And if I'm Munster, I'm not going out with, without KP. I think it'll be a massive task. Despite some of the really nice veterans that they got up there, 
Uh, notably, the three uh, Melbourne Storm boys coming. I'm, I'm, if I'm Munster, I'm texting KP going, what are you doing? And, I, and vice versa. And, I, and I'd figure out between them, i go, are we going to do this? And if we're going to do it, let's do it together. Uh, otherwise, if you're going up there, just you know, by themselves, yeah, pay packet's going to be good. It's a great opportunity, new club and all that sort of stuff. But foundation member. Foundation, but it's a tough ass. It's a real tough ass. So in particular, Munster for me. He's, he's leaving a really good system in the Melbourne Storm. He knows exactly everything's put in place. Apart from the, the one question mark's probably bellyache, whether he's going to um, coach on and who comes in and takes that coaching role if he does move on, because you hear enough people talking about it, whether there's smoke, there's fire. Maybe this is bellyache's last year or the year after, potentially, but he's going to be in there in a mentoring role, which is completely different. Eh? You know, I, uh, ice through um, Gusto in that sort of role at various different clubs. But if I'm those two boys, I'm texting each other and I'm going... You know, they're, they're boys. They've been in Queensland camp together. They know what to expect from each other. They're, you know, really good competitors. If I'm, if I'm those two boys, I'm going, fuck, are we going to do this? If we're going to do it? Or if, if on the other way around, yep. are you going? If you're not going, I'm not going to go. And that, that 100% happens within the league already. I hope, like, it, I hope it does yeah. for their sake. Because, yeah. yeah, if them two, if them two uh, join together, shake, you know, a little hand, handshake agreement, take a little bit less than they normally would. Because I imagine Red but Cliff they got are going to have to pay They got more money. Red Cliff are going to have to pay overs to get him. So just say, um, what do you know, whatever it's, uh, whatever figure they've, you know, maybe they go to 90% of that figure mm. and then and go together. That's what I'd be doing if I was those two. Yeah, 100%. And I think, um, like, even... Like, I'm, I'm looking over the Gold Coast Titans. Jared Wallace hasn't really played too much first grade there. He's someone that could potentially move. Someone like Kevin Proctor, who's best friends with the Bromwich boys. If you yep. can get a Cameron Munster and a KP, or potentially a Cameron Munster and a Reese Walsh... Oh, bro. Dominoes fall after Something that. Something like that. It'll be game over. Everyone will start flowing after that. So if I'm if I'm Munster, I'm, I'm sending out texts to all the guys who are kind of off contracts, going, mm. hey, I'm looking here, come here. I want you to be here. Yeah. Put the feelers out like that. It'd be interesting. If they can get a Munster and a KP, shit changes real quick. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Munster, 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 Walsh, Munster, or KP, bang. And then, you, and then you start getting those role plays. Your boy Drinky. Drinky. <laughs> Drinky. He's, in the, he's back in the team this he's week. He's in the team this week, but, you know. I reckon Mel, if, if, if he leaves, I reckon Melbourne go after Scott Drinkwater mm. and they bring him down there. Yeah. Other guy like names that's sort of up in the air, Jack Bird, players like that. Ooh. Yeah, there's, there's plenty. That's a good there's, piece. There's, there, there are pieces there that would be nice in Redcliffe. But they just need to wait for look, the big dog. If you're looking from the outside in because you know a guy like Jack Bird who's playing in a similar team like the Dragons where there's some nice pieces in board but there's not like that star quality where he can come on and just like poor Jackie Bird. I'm going to talk a little bit. He's, he's a victim of his own per, uh, versatility at the moment. Like he's just playing everywhere. But if you've got two... You know, uh, core superstars, players, core superstar players. That'd be way more enticing for me. Yeah, hundred percent. And like the stadium's cool. Wayne Bennett's cool. The foundation. I think it starts to look a little bit more prettier when. And um, Verils is potentially going up there as now. So you got to, like a quality nine. Yeah. Oh, that's just obviously a rumor. But yep. yeah, I, I think the Munster conversation, the dominoes fall after that, and it's, it's a really interesting one if he yep. can get there as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, cons- Second one, Dragons experiment fails to fire. Obviously, we're, we're hot on all these young guys coming through. Um, you got to learn mistakes on your own and you got to yeah. learn to fail. And, and the best way you can learn is by bouncing back the next week. Anthony Griffin didn't give him the opportunity. I can see where he comes from. Like sometimes dropping people as they kick up the ass, but kind of a generational change right now. Scope, where do you sit on this? Yeah, well, you know, obviously I was, I was high on the Dragons at the start of the season. The big reason was I could see a future. Like you could see that there's something there to work with. And and although it's it's a tough position being a head coach in, in this day and age, I think you stick with the young guys. Um, as you know, the, I did, did a ride on the punt on the weekend and as soon as I seen that the two young'uns were taken out, um, had a bit of a lick on, on, on a few of the games. But apart from that, like the reason I had a lick is because I just thought, fuck, don't go back to the Dragons of old. Like you've seen this for the past couple of years. Going to the veterans hasn't worked. Um, spicing it up with a few of these young guys, they bring energy because you've got like Benny Hunt's the guy. Like Benny he, Hunt's so good right now, Benny bro. Hunt's, Benny Hunt's playing good footy, and, and although the boys didn't play that good against the Sharks, I, I can't pinpoint it to, to the two youngsters. Like out of everyone, I thought across the board they were erratic. So to drop the two youngsters, I don't think that's going to do their confidence in the world a good. I think they're the building blocks, obviously, for the future. They've just they re-signed Sloney um, not too long ago. I think maybe Telltale must be close to locked up or. Or, or whatever, but and you know, little Bud Sullivan. Hopefully, he comes back into the fold soon. But yeah, I don't. I just don't get the theory yeah, just, behind it. It's just gone backwards for me. So and they went up against a really good shark side in the rain. Like, what's what are they meant to do? No front football. Like they're they're your attacking guys. Like yeah. you, if you don't have any 
front foot to play off or you're getting dominated in the wrestle or, or, or anything defensively, what can you play off? Like, what can you do? Honestly, yeah. sometimes when you don't have a pack, that's working. But sometimes as a half, you can just try and kick your way out of trouble. And But that's Benny Hunt's job. Yeah, exactly. And he, he's doing that well. These guys are just supporting him. And as, us, uh, us, as, as you know, as a, you know, playing in the halves, how hard is it to break down an NRL defence these days? It's harder when you've got fucking 12 men on the field, and that's happened to them in the last two games. Mm. You're lo- losing Jaden Sewer uh, for 10 in the bin. I think there was two against the... It happened twice against the, the Panthers, and then Jaden... Um, even though it was... Un, oh, I, thought, I thought they were hard done by, it's very hard to get into any p- fucking shape for Paul Teletel on because Junior is his fucking right edge back rower. Mm. So... Uh, that's two games in a row that he's been without um, Junior Self for 10 minutes of a game. And then when Junes comes back on, the rest of the team's gassed. The right edge has done a shitload of work because players have been out of position. So I thought it was tough. I thought it's a step backwards for the Dragons. And uh, <laughs> it, they've, they've kept the team again for this week. So. You, you call him Junior Self, Jaden Sewer. Oh, shit. I'm all <laughs> over the shop. But yeah, you, uh, I know you're talking about, yeah. bro. Sorry for that. We'll correct ourselves. Yep. Um, last one. Payne House caught in a little hiss in the hoss with Albert Kelly. Got caught on camera. Um, obviously not ideal. I don't think it affects his contract negotiations whatsoever. But not the best look as well at the same time. Yeah. Like this this, this is, happens in footy. Oh, this, this, ha- this has happened to me at every pretty, pretty much every club I've been at. Whether it be, um, you know, as minor as it was. Like it was pretty. It was a kiddies one in comparison. Like I've... I've been out with the boys and there's been proper stinks, like, you mm. know, but like... It, are, we, are you justifying it or are we just saying it happens and it's not as big as people think? I don't know, we're biased, players first, we've been in those situations, it's... It, there wasn't much in it, really, to be fair, too, nah. like, there wasn't any... And it was just like a little shirt. A little grab, baby like, stiff arm. A little baby stiff arm. Payne, Payne does 25 of those a game yeah. on, on defenders and, and Elvie's a tough little bugger, so that wouldn't have bothered him too much, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Not much, not much in it for me. No, nah, no way. Um, yeah, me as well. I don't think it ever fixes contract negotiations right now. Payne House currently asking for a million dollars, apparently. Is he worth it on the cap? <sighs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. For a prop? For a prop. As good as he is. I, I, I think, like, in my as opinion... As good as he is. Yeah, I heard Gus Gould probably wrap it up the best. And yeah, what do you say? He's worth a million dollars, but just not on the cap. So if you can top that up through um, endorsement deals outside of the game or, or give him something like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he's 100% worth a million dollars, but on the cap... I, is someone like David Feed is getting a mil? Yeah. He's worth a mil. Yeah. If you look at it like that, but, but then... But that's the thing. They're in similar situations where... It's a luxury purchase if you can pull it off and you've got the right things in place. But they've still got a lot of holes and so do the Titans and that's where it's showing up in their footy as well. So despite those players probably being worth that or probably just a little bit under for me uh, to play a middle because even... I think 850... It's, it's the same when you compare the Jason Tomalolo contract. Like he well and truly deserved it. He went through the run of doom through those periods even when... They were missing the big dogs, you know, JT missed a year or retired. Like, he just carried that team. But it's so hard, man, because when we, we're going to talk about breaking down some of these teams, some of these teams are just rudderless. And you, if you don't have a half, if you don't have your spine intact, it doesn't matter what, what else is around. Like, mm. Bulldogs, every, like prime the Bulldogs example. are prime example. The, when they were, they, they did really well. They, their intent was right against the storm for the first 15 minutes. And they were getting themselves in a position. And then what it like it was kiddies for the storm to be fair like they were on the line there was just like they were they were reading the plays storm they went down to short side and storm ended up having more players on defense and than they did there. off yeah off a shape like I think Pappy ended up because Pappy does it really well we'll talk about it a little bit longer uh, later on but Pappy swept in behind they ended up being a two on one on the wing up and that's like that's an indication of what where the the Bulldogs are out with a spine and, and you pay their forward pack, you know, really good players. They've paid good money for Tevita Pangai. But if you don't have that guy, I just it's always been that old one. You've got to, you've got to pay the right positions and, and paying that much for a, for a middle, it's a bit of a tough ass. Any middles out there right now worth the millie? If, if it is, it's going to be him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, fucking oath. If you're going to pick one, it's going to be him. Um, who else? Isaiah, like I think you've got to be a lock because the locks are a they can a, pass and well they're 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 moulding into a part of the spine now. You look at all some of the best teams: Cam Murray, Isaiah. Yeah, I'd pay Isaiah a mil. Would you? 
I'd pay a Zoe Yale meal, fucking in a heartbeat, yeah. Mm, I love that. Yeah. All right, so Scope, Scope's favourite part of the show, the NRLW Scope Spotlight, obviously rolling to the grand final. Shout out to the Roosters, getting it done over the favourites. Appreciate that. Been winning a bit of money on us as well, but we'll talk about that in the next show. Peanut butter and jam, baby. We'll get to that. Scope Spotlight, let's go. Unbelievable performance from the your Roosters girls, uh, Ice. Mm. You've, you've had the mock on the boys for the first couple of rounds, but Not you, anymore. You, you, Coming didn't, good. you didn't manage to do that to the girls. Uh, their centres were unbelievable. Jess Sergis and Isabel Kelly, New South Wales Australian centres. Everyone knows who they are in the game, but Isabel Kelly in particular. She had one try. She had 14 carries for 156 metres, 72 post-contact metres. Uh, Bit of leg drive there, Scope. 11 tackle breaks. Ooh. That's what I got in a season, those post-contact metres and, <laughs> and tackle breaks. But um, she also had six tackles. Five of them were grouse one-on-one. The girls were doing a really good job of wedging from the outside and really frustrating, in particular, Tamika Upton, who was coming out the back for the Brisbane Broncos girls. Um, but the turning point, Isabella Kelly, Is- Isabel Kelly got the first try to get them on the board when they were 16-0 down. But it was, uh, I think they were down by a tr- uh, try. Zahara Tamara who can put it on a string. She kicks really well yeah. uh, for the Roosters. She's the six for them. She put in a kick, and it was just an effort from Isabel Kelly. Uh, she chased the ball down, got, got uh, trapped to make up in goals, drop out. They end up scoring that set to tie it up, and then they go, they go ahead on the next try. So unbelievable f- performance from Isabel Kelly and the Roosters girls. Uh, shout out to Corby Baxter, who yeah. come in here, skipper of the Roosters. Uh, well done, girls. And you know, I've been high on the Dragons, so I'm really looking forward to this grand final. Who wins? I'm going to go to the Dragons. I think the Dragons, are, are, they deserve to be favourites. Um, it's, a, it's a nice story for the Roosters girls knocking off the fucking champs, the back to back to back champs in the, in the Broncos. So we're going to find ourselves a new NRLW champion. We had um, Shawnee Stell was in here the other day as well, and she was meant to be playing for um, St. George and her partner, Holly Willow, plays for yep. them. She obviously is a little bit biased because her partner's playing, but she thinks that they'll get it done as well. Right. They're across the board, that's, they're just fucking, they just work really well together. I've obviously talked about Sowie before, but um, they reckon he's a it's gun. a good game. They reckon he's a gun coach. It'll be a fucking good game. <laughs> yeah, they've got they've got talent across the board. Um, Why are they putting it up at Redcliffe? I think maybe they assume the Broncos girls to be in it with the Gold Coast Titans girls who played really well this year too. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure why it's up there, but this is. I think this is. Uh, they're still replaying the 2021 season, season? to oh, start okay. off with, right? So then. Um, I, get, I dare say we're at the back end of the season when they come back in for the actual 2022 season or probably hopefully it's down here no roll into the grand final one yeah. like they normally do yeah yeah, yeah there we well. go so uh, maybe just giving uh, Redcliffe a taste of it up there but be a good game make sure you tune in because it's uh, really that's be- quality man that's yeah. it's getting better eh? yeah well done to the girls both teams some shots getting put on from those Roosters crew or Victor Radley Juniors Oh, um, Hannah Southwell, bro. <laughs> fuck, she can hit, man. <laughs> she can hit. Yeah, there's some fuck. Yeah, I always because the girls like they're so entertaining. They they haven't like they're obviously still learning the game. Some of the girls maybe not. They don't brace for contact bro, as they, well, eh? They're off the back fence every time, and like they don't they don't have that little bit of footwork. Some of the boy, you watch some of the boys on the weekend. They've got a little little handbrake in them. Ooh. Not the girls, baby. They go hard. And so yeah, it, and it like, leads to some really good shots. And as you start to play football and you're in the middle, you start to develop like a couple of little tools that you use. They might be like a high forearm, a spin, a palm, or anything along those lines. So yeah, there's some girls that have got it, and they look really good. They, yeah. you can tell the difference. Like and the other ones, the skipper like for that. the Dragons, Kezi Apps, has got it right. She she can move around. She's experienced. She's a captain of the New South Wales team. She has a little bit of late footwork. Gets the bumpers up. Got an offload. But her, uh, her partner, Elsie Elbert, <laughs> <laughs> straight down the guts, baby. <laughs> there's no, hey, there's yeah. no footwork there. She's just coming straight over top of you. So, yeah, fuck, it's going to be good. Elsie Elbert into Hannah Southwell. Bang, Ooh. there's going to be a collision on the weekend. So Who I'm wins? Looking forward to it. Yeah, I think the Dragons. Yeah. I think the Dragons. No, nah, that collision. Oh, that collision. Rugby South League. Boy. Rugby <laughs> League wins that collision. <laughs> A few more sponsors after that, hopefully. <laughs> All right, review, preview, rolling into the games. We're going to break down a small part of what they've done last week and rolling into this week as well. So Thursday night football, obviously the big talking point, Knights versus Manly. Tommy Turbo out, they said four weeks as well. Um, done well to play off a medial for the second half of the game. Started to look his best again, had a bunch of touches, but nice performance last week. What would you think, thoughts on them? Yeah, I thought... Um, they the try Knights, hard, eh? Th- yeah, they were just underdone. So they, I wrote down straight away, uh, against the Panthers, they played uh, for 50 minutes with 12 men. I thought that they showed, it, they showed in their performance. They come out, they're really flat, they look tired. Uh, and Cronulla just had all that energy. And to, to Cronulla's credit, they were going against the wind and 
it almost like Fitzy had the mindset of just rip into these guys early and we'll they'll fold we'll later. Get, we'll get success at the back end and that they still try really hard. I liked um, the little piece that they did with Dane Guy, Gay Guy getting that was mic'd cool, up. Bro. I love uh, that. I hope yeah. Benji does that on his show uh, throughout the whole season. But yeah, that's that. That was my um, feeling. Lights obviously being a Manly fan, it sucks to see Turbo um, go down because I was really looking forward to. I thought he was. The last couple of weeks, just really inserting himself. Like we talked about a plan B for Turbo, and as as pretty as shit looked last year, uh, when he was, you know, the length of the field tries and and popping up everywhere and running over fullbacks, I, I thought he really established himself early on in the sets where um, he was. I thought I thought he was playing a little bit reserved in the first couple of weeks. He was sort of just taking the carries to get the carries in. When he was coming out of yardage, he was really looking to fucking hurt people with his carries. Um, and it was getting them on the front foot. Some really good performances as well from um, Josh Alloway, I thought was he really was awesome, impressive. Bro. He, yeah. he, he was a big difference for me. Yeah, he, I, I wrote down there's a different presence about the middles. And then off the he back... He made of, Marty better. That's what we've always said. You know, Marty's not that guy. But if you, if you give Marty a half-quick play the ball... That's when he comes into his own. He starts skipping away, skipping around, fucking chucks the arm out. And Marty's second stint was way better than his first one as yeah. well. And like you said, it was just direct. Yeah, and yeah. So uh, um, another guy that I was, I was really impressed with, with um, Tolu Kola. Yeah, bro. Um, out in the centres, I thought they did a good job attacking that. Uh, what's that one? Oh, you're yeah, thinking about the boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought the his presence. He was just. He was just enough to give Turbo some of those little sweet plays where, you know... And even the, when he dropped under, bro. Yeah, yeah, in the first couple of games, people sort of were just like, all right, Turbo's out the back, shut him down, we're good. But if, if it almost felt like the Raiders were like, fuck, this Kohler could be a problem as well, you know? And it bought a little bit more time for, for Turbo. So um, it's sad that Turbo's out now because I was hoping that they might have stuck with that combination and then maybe there was a decision to be made in the other centres. Um, so they've named him at fullback. Does he play fullback, or is that is that a Dizzy Hasler probably little, a dead special little shifty? Yeah, Garrett I, I, know, goes. I know he likes to play Gaz at fullback, Ruben Garrick. So uh, I'd like to see Kohler go there because I think it'll be good for because he needs runs under the board. You can see he's cramping up. Do you see him yeah. fucking getting the stretch in that? And he had that massive dent in his calf. He just hasn't been. He needs to be playing as much footy as possible and he needs to be playing if they because when turbo comes back turbo's fullback right so he, he needs to be in his best shape as possible so if he ends up working himself into a starting role when turbo gets back it'll be uh, i think it'll benefit him long term so yeah. i hope desi sticks with him at fullback because it'll be uh, better in the long run for me all right nice first manly he gets it done Ooh, are, yeah. you getting, are you getting against your boys bro Surely, really, no? Yeah, nights at home. Nights at home. Yeah. I'm yet to see it. Hey, this is, we've got to be honest, right? We've got to be honest. I don't know. I'd rather be biased than honest sometimes. Yeah, that's the, they can't be biased and honest <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I think nights at home, I, I, I've, in, I've enjoyed the way that nights have been playing this year. I think last week was a reflection of the effort that they put in the week before against the Panthers. And I'm yet to see the combination for Manly, see how this plays out. Uh, like I said, I'd like a Kohler to be playing fullback, but he won't. He just won't have the legs for that, eh? Yeah, I just don't think he'll play. I think they'll put Gaz at the fullback, and uh, yeah, let's go the Knights. Ooh, I like that. Let's go. All right, well, second game of the round, six o'clock Friday. The Waz got a win last week up against the Cowboys. What are your thoughts on the Warriors? First time we've seen Sean Johnson and Reese Walsh play together. Sean, he set up a little bit of a try. It's just enough to get him done, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I've. So much more composure, and that's what we're looking for. Because while she can provide that X factor, and and Shawnee frees that up for him, but it also, what I what I found was it it just settled down. Adam, um, Josh Curran, some of these players through the middle, because those boys can play with the footy. I, I didn't he, like Josh Curran. At the, uh, I know he's a really good player, but I reckon it takes away his best assets when he was playing at the right back row. Do you like so the punching holes? I like, I like no, I like him in the I like him in the middle, thirteen, yeah. and and doing the link passes and stuff yeah. like that. And he was on the edge, and Shawnee was just sort of dropping him off, and he was getting picked apart. Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, you know what I think happened because he played lock the the, week, the game before against the Tigers, and he was overplaying his hand. But with Shawnee back, Shawnee, you don't have to worry no. about that because all the boys sort of played within themselves. When you don't have like that half, that true, that true half like that, who can take over a game, sometimes the boys start becoming independent yeah, contractors. They start going, 
yeah, Sean, he's out. I can fucking chuck a little play on here. Um, as good as some of them are, I think it just really settled them all down and, um, yeah, much more composed effort. And then with it, it just relaxes Walshie as well to come in and he can come up with the big plays because Sean, he even just like back end of the game, chucking a nice few little kicks in for repeat sets, just those little things, that, that was massive from Shawnee. Yeah, it was great to see the Warriors not lose it for themselves. A lot yeah. of sometimes when they're in that position and, and Shawnee's a steady influence of that as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing that combination grow and get better, and it is going to get better because they're yeah. both wonderfully talented players. So going up against the Cowboys, I know you sort of missed this, you are away at a wedding, yep. but, but the Cowboys were there. But they, were, they had so much effort into their performance that are going up against the Roosters, they would have been teeing us up as, they, well, this is our big challenge. 20,000 people rocked up to the game. Ooh, as nice. well yep. Bro, so in the first set they looked like they looked there then over time obviously Roosters just done what they done and, and everyone turned up for the Roosters as well so I wouldn't place too much emphasis on that performance as well I thought they still looked you can tell they were growing from that week before but it's just a different kettle, kettle of fish yep. and you've talked about this plenty of times round five people don't know whether they're good or they're bad yep. they're still in that 50-50 for me yeah so, there are a few teams that are still there but there are some teams that well and truly know who they are yep. and positive like when you look at the Panthers obviously we'll get to them but they know they're elite and there are teams straight away, the dogs and the tigers that go fuck room for a long season. We start planning Mad Monday. All right, Wiles versus Cowboys, six o'clock. Where are you going? Um, I need to I'll, I'll watch the game, uh, the Sarvo. Scotty Drinkwater, fullback yeah, too, drink, sorry. Yeah, drink, Drinky's in at fullback. Um, oh, that, one thing I forgot to uh, just quickly go back to the Knights of Manly, uh, Tui Pulotu. Yep. Um, he's named at centres in place of uh, Brad Parker. So... Um, I wonder if that's a Desi special as well. He, he's a, a guy that Chico knows a little bit more about. He's been playing reserve grade with him. I've seen a little bit in the trials, but it gives me the indication, I was supposed to talk about it before, that maybe if Kohler gets the shot at fullback, this is an indication where he might be rather than flipping him to the wing. So yep. um, back to the – I, I want to watch the game first. I want to go over the Cowboys and Roosters game, and then I'll give my opinion on peanut butter and jam tomorrow. Yeah, I think the Wilds get it done. Um, I do like Scotty Drinkwater at the back, though, even though he's not a hammer, but, like, he doesn't have that – pure athletic talent he's he's got a lot more probably strings to the bow and when you think about out the back plays three on twos um, I think he adds a real big passing element to them as well because you look at someone like Chad Townsend who's kind of catch and pass and push and kick and he does that really well and then you got Tommy Dearden who's probably a better runner than he yeah. is a passer I think Scotty Drinkwater adds that different passing element at, a, at an elite level yeah. like he could strip a three I'm on two I'm excited to see how that plays out for sure and yeah he'd, he'd have a chip on his shoulder mm. like he's going up there and big money and they've re-signed him and he's the big dog get dropped so I'm, I'm keen to see how he goes. Yep. Um, but I still think the Wilds get it done for some reason. I just like their forward back. All right, Friday night football. Broncos, as always, going up against the Roosters. My boys, thoughts on the Bronx last week? Obviously, you did you watch the Wilds game? You yeah, did, I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously with the Sinbins and yep. they put them under pressure, I think for 30 minutes of the game, they didn't have... 13 players which is a little bit frustrating Makes it tough. still look clunky as fuck to yeah. me their attack doesn't look like it's flowing whatsoever what do you think of the Broncos last week yeah the, it reminds me when Willie Tonga come down to Para when he left the Cowboys because he'd been at really good systems in the Cowboys and the Bulldogs that had really good veterans there's so much talent in the middle there for the Broncos but they're just so raw so just being able to find positions on the field to set up you could see Ren gets a little bit frustrated because he's got a plan in his head of where he wants to get certain parts of the field which we always say are so important um, but you just got and it's not this is when it becomes hard again when it's not just like the same sort of players just making silly little errors where whether it be um, you carry him with a with a loose offload who's really nice I love him as a player but he's still just learning his craft through the middle and becoming I think he's got an opportunity to become a late 13 mm. in the game uh, Tom Flegler, I love his energy when he comes off. He looks like he's fucking a kettle's about to go off in his head, like he's always on fire. But I love his energy. He just needs to be able to harness it. He, he had some tough calls, man. It was t it was tough. Like the the um the shot on Adam was right at the line. Fucking Adam's a big body. You got to fucking amp up to hit him, and then he come in and hit him in the waist. And um, I, I thought that was hard done by getting sent for ten. But there are little things that creep into their games all across the board, whether it be making um, little breaks down the edge, and rather than because that that right edge has got so much talent, and they're making these little half chances, and they want to turn it into points because they know they're special, but mm. they just got to know when to fucking rein it back in a little bit and. You're playing a team like the Warriors who, if you'd watched the game, if you'd watched video the week before and watched against the Tigers, you know you don't have to do anything crazy to beat them. Mm. And you can see Ren gets a little bit frustrated with it at the back. He's an angry little man. I sort of watch him off camera sometimes. And he's sort of just maybe trying to find that combination. Billy Walters will get a shot this week. With I, I, don't mind, I don't mind that, bro. I don't mind it as well. So 
Capo um, returns as well, which is going to be a big. Yep, like yep. he sort of steadies them up. Well, he he's he's big for them. Like yep. he's that veteran presence that I'm alluding to with with some of these younger guys, and they're still very raw. There's plenty of talent there. It'll come, but it just you know maybe the, the right veteran presence. In, I think uh, so. Tossed in there to just help those younger guys out. Yeah, Roosters last week, I thought they were really good. Um, obviously, all the big dogs, the ones that are on the big money, started to fire. I think Jared starting the game made a big difference for them as well. Yep. They're kind of in that transition phase of, like, Jared's still the big dog, but sometimes he starts on the bench, and Takiyaho still, like, one of the better props in, in the game, but yep. he's getting a little bit older as now, so you're kind of just waiting for that next guy to sort of come along and be a little better. But Luke Kerry was freakish, and yep. Joseph Manu was a standout for me. Yeah. He's probably... He, he, in my opinion, best center in the game right now, and we got to take away. It depends if Latrell and Tommy yeah, are playing there. Yeah, yeah. Right now, best center in the game. Yeah, I agree on that. And um, that, like, even though I've watched the game, you could, when you look back on it, like once I seen, I was watching the scoreline while I was at the wedding. I was like, "Fuck, that's so obvious." Like, mm. yeah, they got fucking embarrassed against. We talk about the rivalry with the Roosters and Rabbitohs, and everyone's fucking starting to write them off, and they've got all these fucking legends and. Um, you know, Robbo's not there. It's back. Very rarely do the Roosters are fucking going to be talked about as, oh, they might not be able to pull it off against the Cowboys up in Townsville. So they had all this ammunition to fucking fire up and have a big performance like this. So when it plays out, you're like, fuck, how did I see that? So, yeah, we just buy into headlines sometimes. Say, hey? yeah. all right, Broncos versus Roosters. How much are the Roosters win by? Uh, I need to have a look at it. Same thing, mate. I just want to watch the Roosters and Cowboys game back and then I'll have it for peanut butter and jam tomorrow. Well, I reckon Brogham Roosters is going to smack him. So I know the line's like minus foot and a half. According minus to 12. Sc- minus, minus 12. 12. Yep. Um, yeah, I think they've stayed up. They've stayed up in the Gold Coast for the whole weekend. So those yeah. little those little one week trips away, are kind of fun, especially when you're sitting in fucking Sydney rain the whole time. All right, Saturday football Raiders versus Storm. Obviously, Raiders' performance last week were pretty shocking. Um, they keep just trying to offload. The second half performance was terrible. But do you get much much of a read on those boys? <sighs> they're a hard read, man. The Raiders. They're one of those teams. They've got them in that position where. Uh, they're at home. They're two from two at home and, and played pretty well at home. But then their away performance, fuck, they looked tired. They looked really... I, I messaged Chez as I was watching the replay the next day. I was like, fuck, was it hot and mudgy? Because everyone looked like they were gas from both teams. Even, you know, you got, like I said, Tolu Kola was um, cramping on the up. ground cramping up. So it looked hot there. Um, maybe the grass, there was a little bit in the grass. It's one of those, you know, when you play at those country grounds, they've got that heavier paddock and it just takes it out of the boys. It's a slack environment too. You know, when you get down in, it's so chill when you're so used to a quicker pace. Oh, they're from Canberra. It's been yeah. the same pace. Yeah, no, but in the, the stadiums, like a little bit different. You get those different sheds, but I don't know. I'm trying to find excuses because Raiders are there. Raiders are, Raiders are a tough read, man. And um, their right side, I, I, I highlighted it before, Defensively, they're mm. gonna teams are gonna come at them, man, until they figure that out. Um, uh, Semi Velavai and uh, the the kid Brad Schneider playing halves. Um, Jordy Rupps is on that edge. They look a little bit out of sync, you know. And that's you, with that performance on the weekend, with how Manly were able to strip them apart a few times. I dare say you got that Melbourne Storm left edge of Cam <laughs> Munster, Justin Ollum, and uh, Nick uh, Nick Meaney uh, jumped onto that left wing at the minute. Yeah. They say there's going to be a fair bit of traffic coming down their way. Oh, it's going to be scary. Obviously, um, the Storm boys, crazy performance. Pappy scoring four. Man, just put on a clinic. Beautiful football to watch. Obviously, if you're just a rugby league fan and a Melbourne Storm fan, not so much if you're a Bulldogs fan. Are they, do they start humming from here? Pappy's form performance was unbelievable. Everyone knows about the attacking side. Yeah, he scored some nice tries. If you, if you get a chance to go back and watch the replay, watch Pappy's first 10 to 15 minutes defensively on the line. It's just like, I know, I know we've seen it before and I know it's, I've seen it before in a guy called Billy Slater. Billy Slater was, for me, was, he's obviously, whether you want to rate him the best fullback of all time, defensively, man, Bill used to frustrate the shit out of you because, like I said, sometimes you think you've got a number stripped and Bill's either at the back or, um, I think he went down the left-hand side and forced an error because the Bulldogs had, um, I'd say they would have dom- – I didn't look at the stats. I probably would have said they would have dom- dominated field possession. Yeah, that's 60-40 to start off with. Got themselves in position, just nothing was doing. Enough. Pappy was unreal in that. Whether he got in at marker, he got in at A down a short side and was putting pressure on him, forcing errors. It might not have been him directly because the pass had gone on, but then it, it freed up Munster and Justin Olin to come in and make a play. I thought his performance was unreal. If you're a fullback, you're on fullback watching and you want to understand how to defend on a line – 
in particular, the dragons against the eels. I think the dragons should be watching um, what Pappy did. I thought that was a masterclass. And another guy I want to um, give a bit of, bit of a shout out to is Josh King. Just the typical storm recruit player. Comes down. Seen Ballyake did a interview with Matty Johns. Uh, it was a really good interview on Fox. Yeah, he does like that podcast format. And he spoke so highly. The, the standout from their ridiculous army camps that they had is Josh King. And he's just going to be one of those storm players. By that back end of the season, we're going to be looking at him as um, a potential rep player for the following season, I reckon. He's, going to, he's turned him into an 80-minute play. He does all the right things. He's just... I don't know. Just he's the well, Chris, the, the the new Christian Christian Welsh comes like you know been in the system. Where's he, he from? Sydney, Newcastle. Oh, so played New at South Newcastle. Wales. Newcastle played at Newcastle. I think he's from the Central Coast, maybe. So it might be the new Dale Fanuka, you reckon? Oh, Dale's a big one because Dale's a fucking lunatic. But um, I think you know Welsh is a pretty good comparison. Like Welsh, a couple of years ago was looking at going to, to Par- Parramatta, and you know it might not have had the career. You, Got to give him credit because he's, he, you know, he's done it as well. But there are so many of these guys that have gone down to Melbourne uh, or, or come through that system and just uh, exceeded their own, uh, even exceeding their own expectations. And I think Josh King's going to be one of those players. Yeah, Raiders first storm and gets it done. Storm by plenty or Raiders are tricky down at sea. But the Melbourne's the same read. weather, bros. Melbourne's tough the same read. weather. Yeah, tough read. I'm going to go just based on. Um, the flow of Raiders going... Uh, I used to hate playing in Cambo. You know when you walk around town and it's all like concrete? So they've got win, loss, win, loss. Yeah, let's go. Win, loss, win, loss. It'll be a tight one, but storm. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll put in a performance. All right, guys. This podcast is brought to you by Earn You. Earn you is a fun way of combining the world of cryptocurrency and gambling. All you got to do is pick your tips for the weekend by joining the round and have a chance to win actually real money. So what we got to do is transfer your money from AUD to the BetU token, and you can just sort of pick multis and win actual real money. So we've attached the link down below so you guys can sign up the first 200 people to sign up get a hundred points for free use the code 100 yktr you repeat that 100 yktr a referral code is down below in the link so make sure you sign up make sure you get rolling and um yeah get some tips right and actually keep it 100 baby keep it 100 good thing about it you don't lose money as well all right sales first dragons um yeah both teams sort of similar scenarios, you think? Is, nah, that, is that fair? Or nah, South's a lot, are a lot better? I sent a lot more in South. I thought even though I think there was more of a... Um, there's more to do with... I think Penrith are just that much better than everyone. Yeah. There's plenty of... There's, I read, there's plenty of improvements still to come with South. They... With thereabouts, I think, you know, guy, Lockie Ilias is only going to get better as the season goes on and he's starting to find himself, starting to be a little bit more ball dominant. Um... They don't have that 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 whole that, I think you know is an underrated part of that left edge is Dane Gay guy who's moved on, eh? Mm. I think Gay, Gags is really underrated because Gags has got a really nice catch pass on him. He runs a he runs a really nice tough line. So when they would do, when they run that shape, it's not necessarily the lead line is the traditional lead line where the back row is getting inside the three man. Gags used to run that so well that they'd run the lead line inside the center. And then Latrell would be on the outside, and you know sometimes either Latrell would cross over. But how many times do you remember wingers just walking one over, bro? Yeah, yeah. walking one over, or you know being a punter, and we're, we're looking for jam on Alex Johnson, and then fucking Cody plays short to fucking Gags, who goes over and ends up scoring a couple, and he ends up doing that little. <laughs> yeah, he's doing he's doing these ones. He's he's got the arm out, bang, bangs it down. He's fucking Gets doing a little handshake doing, to his son. I think doing a celebration to yeah. his son. So. And doing a great job at, at nights, and even now he's flipped over to the other side. So there's plenty of there for South. So I just thought, uh, for me at the moment, it was more an indication that the pa- pa- it's Panthers in distant second, which we'll get to. Um, Dragons on the other other ten, same, a little bit similar in like as like I said last week. Dragons' is ten is intent is right, but they're so erratic. Mm. Like it's just players trying to do things. I see Benny Hunt as an off the cuff style player. Yeah. And yeah, like, he is. He is in a way. So it's sort of a reflection of him as well. But some of the, in particular, in D, some of the boys that shoot out and try to fix things by themselves um, is, is more what I'm getting at. And um, a guy like Birdie, like I, uh, I was when I was watching the game, I was like, he's a he's, he's one of those so guys. Good, he's a victim of his own versatility. Where you know they think they can chuck him in at any position, and he and he fucking does a job. But he's for me, he's a back rower or. 13. 13 or lot or, or edge back road and, and they've chucked him in at six and he does a job he comes up with a couple of nice plays but um, I'd like to see obviously the big one is Teletel Moan like leaving him 
in it. Um, How do you get him in the game? Telltale? It, yeah, he seems like a pretty quiet, like, I, I don't know him personally, but when you sort of watch the mean as a player, he's not sort of the type of guy that looks like he's sort of shouting for the ball. He kind of, almost like a Dill Brown when he was early on, you yeah. know what I mean? Similar. Yeah, fuck yeah. He can be, that's Dill, Dill, Brown, Dill Brown's a good comparison. They'll just let him come into his game. I think they underrated, like, the loss of um, Chainsaw, Andrew McCulloch, when he was out. I think when you've got Andrew McCulloch and Huntsy in, who can um, – Chainsaw can control the middle and Benny Hunt can come in and play his sort of footy. It really suits Teletel. So um, I think they're trying to find a spot for all of them. Oh, for me, yeah, birdie at lock, move Bomber up into uh, the front row. Um, Francis Mollo, so I think he, he was had, good. I he had some good. nice spurts again. Uh, and then chucking, you know, the vets, you, you bring um, Blake Laurie and, and Aaron Woods off the bench. I don't know, Dragons, I think it's going to come down to coaching decisions for me, whether I, the way that I view them, and that's, that could be changed. Like, like I said, I had a little crack on Parramatta just before the game because I seen that Hook had made the changes. Where I was, before that, I was thinking Dragons might give them a bit of a run. Mm. They looked right up to the first half, eh? but then obviously Parra were special. So, uh, Sales versus Dragons, who wins? Yeah, I think South's still a number on him here. I think so too. All right, Titans versus Eels. Titans, uh, <laughs> I, had a, I had an analogy on them and we sort of spoke about this before. Mm. Like they remind me of a boy and in, in the level of water and depending on how high the level is, is how well they play. So if they play a good side, they're up there with the good sides. But if they play a shit side, yeah. fuck, they're right down there as well. Yeah. And that comes back to youth and all that sort of stuff like that. But yeah, I, it was... You, Probably the yuckers game. Me and you agree. Yeah, it was ugly. It was. I, I wrote. I wrote down. I said, uh, the best part about this uh, this game is the Channel Nine commentary because mm. I. Some people. Some people give them a, a bit of a bad rap. It's almost like a, a footy companion when you watch the Channel Nine, especially when Fatty's up there and Fatty's funny. Fat, Fatty is fucking so funny. Some, I don't know. Maybe you've got to have. Do you reckon? Are we just a bit older? Do you reckon? Appreciate a, it? Yeah. Do you reckon you've got to be a little bit older to appreciate Fat's humour or? Or you've had to be within the game or just no locker room um, Maybe. banter? I, I think locker room banter is similar to... Like, most tradies would talk the same shit yeah. as us, you know what I mean? Or, but it was so funny, man. Him and uh, Cam Smith just laughed at him the whole time. Basically, he's, he's, he's got those two and JT's down on the side. But that's how good the game, <laughs> the game was that I was, I was just listening to the boys more like a footy companion. Yeah, I re- you're exactly right, mate. I said Titans are playing the Tiger standards here. I said they're trapped into, play, trapped into the big play. I said, Direct will do it. Mm. Just go straight through them. They've got all that talent in the, in, in the, in the middle. middle. Mm. And it comes with the, the youth that's in the halves. Luke, I got you there. You thought I was looking at someone outside, eh? Hey? I was just trying to gather my thoughts. But it's the same thing with this young core uh, of Toby Sexton, Brimo, that are learning on the run, where they might be watching Nathan Cleary and Jerome Lua on a fucking Andrew. Friday night mm. and seeing them pull off those sorts of plays and going, let's do that. Whereas they got to play to their skill set right now or play to their strengths as a, as a team because I think their strengths is well and truly in their uh, forward pack. I think is Bo for more back this week. Yeah, he is. He, he's, he's a been, weapon. I like, I think he might have missed through COVID. Philip Sammy also missed through COVID, so he's back in uh, at the expense of, who's this, Brian Kelly misses out. But the Titans, when they play direct, and the, we've already seen it, round one against the Parramatta Eels. Titans can play to the Parramatta Eel style mm. of footy. Mm. So I think it's going to be pretty similar. I think it's going to be a bit of a score fest and the Gutherino might be back out oh, straight yeah, away. Oh, Sammy. Phil yeah. Sammy got so, him last time. So yeah, a bit of a grudge match pretty early on. So I kind of like it. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll Eels. Be fun. Ooh. <laughs> Best performance I've seen at Eels. I'm a believer in Parramatta Eels right now. Well, we said they were going to be top four. Believer with a double E. Believer. Believe. <laughs> believer. You got Believes. That? Believe B, with the double B, hill, yeah, B, I got that. Double e. uh, I am a Parramatta believer right now. The style of they played, and you've talked about this many times, where Parramatta they start to get in trouble. They try and pass their way out of trouble for Campbell Gillard and Junior. That was the most direct I've ever seen them play. And there's a saying in football like you play north south, which basically means you play up the field towards the post. That style of play just suits him. Dylan Brown is elite right now. He's one of the best five eights in the comp. He makes Mitchell Moses a lot better. I talked about this early on with Nathan Cleary when they first started because he's always had Jerome Lua. Bro, they've got like a 92, 93% win rate crazy. together. It's fucking crazy. Now Dylan Brown's starting to come into his own. I think it frees up Mitchell Moses. For sure. And that's the strength that, that Nathan's had. As good as Nathan is, his understanding of what Jerome can do and... Trusting. Not wanting, mm. not wanting to do it all by himself, and 
And having that 1B with Jerome is probably something that Mitchie's never had. Like, he's had Luke Brooks, and I think they were like... They never really had that combination. And I reckon I think they both wanted to be the 1A. Yeah, and I think he's starting to realise that if he can let fucking Dill be a legit 1B, because at the end of the day, it's got to roll through Mitchie. He's got to control everything and free up Dill so he can come up with it, but... Um, I re- even away from us, we spoke to Dill when we did um, he was at the front of our show last week and I ended up running into him yesterday at Kitty's Run Club and the thing I love about the Eels is like they're not happy with what they're doing so I, yeah so that they, they think they can be better they think they're having little lapses still and um, I was speaking to Dill about that and fucking if you're a Parramatta fan that's a great mindset because one of my biggest problems with and as you'd know Luke you've been a para fan is when para fans and para players get ahead of themselves and they start thinking they're killing it and they can match it with the big teams. When I, I ran into, when I was speaking to Dewey yesterday, having a coffee, you could see that he's like, oh yeah, but we did this, we did that. He's rat's ass though. Yeah, but also it's a good mindset to have. And he's like, oh, that's why I love Dill Brown as well. Cause if you've got a guy like, outside looking in, I know Mitchie a little bit. I've met him, I know his older brother and that, but Mitchie seems to be like that footy head. Fucking, <laughs> you know, he wants to be, he wants to talk footy. <laughs> Um, 24-7 That's his he, go, he goes to the pub With the steed in the Yeah end, and he? fucking Watching video Which is mad And if you've got a guy Like Dill who Really balances him out like, So um, yeah, yeah, I, I I just, That's the mindset I got from the boys You know Fucking um, Bailey Simonson He was down there too Yesterday He's been a nice Little addition Man I love Walking Blake Wonga Blake At the, the wing, on the wing bro. bro He's way better Yeah I like him On the wing man Because he doesn't Have to come up Those erratic decisions <laughs> In the centres um, But yeah this, I think this will be Pretty uh, This will be a bit Of a tricky game I think I agree. Titans, like I said, like you said, they play to the quality of the team that they're playing. And they're I the think boy in the water. The boy in the water. I think this could be a fucking 32-24 sort of game. 32-26, which will be fun to watch. Loading up on the overs. Oh it's, oh, it's up there, so it'll be good. All right, guys, this podcast is also, also brought to you by Manscaped. They've been fucking with us for the last sort of five, six months now, so shout out to Manscaped. If you do want to get something and look after the pubes and look after the beard and look after the back air in Scope's case and the back of the tricep <laughs> as well, <laughs> use the code ICE to get 20% off and free shipping. Or you can use Scope's code to get the back of the triceps. Scope. Is it Scope? S-C-O-P-E. 20% off, free shipping. Look after the pubes, yes, look see? after yourself. Even just had a little trim yesterday, just chucked a little one on top. Got to keep the silver fox. People were, people were a fan of the salt and pepper scope, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so is Noosh, so. Does it ever get caught on the double chin down there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit in that. <laughs> All right, guys, Sharks versus Tigers. Um, of, this could potentially be a fucking smacking. Sharks performance last week, both me and you go really high on the Sharks, love everything about them. We see champion qualities with them. Obviously, a lot of the times when they play, it's probably the most time we text each other, I reckon, yeah. too, as well. We're like, fuck, these guys are good, man. It's because like, it's, it's a bit of a treat, you know? Like, I, I think you, you, you watch Roosters games and Storm, you expect it, but now watching um, the Sharkies. Sharks, it's getting that feel, getting that feel of a genuine contender. And I like the things I like about them is those times when they're under pressure a lot and then they can turn that into like a long distance try or someone like that. I think a lot of the good sides do that. And the best example I can think of is with the Roosters when they play the Raiders and the GF. Bro, they were under the pump, under the pump, give the ball the trail, get them out. So they're not relying on, even though they've got beautiful structures and stuff like that, they've got enough talent to get them out, but they have the resolve to back their defense to win games. They fucking earn it. Yeah. They earn those big plays. And it doesn't, people, when people look at it, say, I'm, I'm coaching, uh, captain coaching down at Glenmore Park. And I, I reverted back to, to trying to give the boys an example. We're about to get an early, um, early year footy. We're about to have our first game. I said, boys, if you want to get an idea of how to play early round footy, go look at the Sharks and what Fitzy's doing with the Sharks. One thing that stood out for me is the back five, how they get in. So what they did against the Knights, they front-loaded their energy. They knew the Knights were going to... For me, this is really good coaching. Again, I can't... I love talking about the Sharks at the minute. I love talking about, you know, really good coaching. I think Fitz is going to be elite. So one, the first thing, the, the middles, when they, when they were defending in the first 10 to 15 minutes, the fucking line speed and the intent from the middles was to get up, fucking put pressure on the Knights pack put pressure on the kicker because they knew mm. that the back five needed that. And then what the back five did was they repaid their forwards. So when it come time to attack, it was fucking Katoa, Mulatalo, uh, Will Kennedy. Moisa was getting in for carries. Nico was getting in for carries. They're going, boys, we got your back. We're going to get you out of yardage. Just defend yourself, what, yeah. Maybe the last tackle, you get Hamlin, Ueli or Rudolph coming on the back of it on the fifth tackle. And then the boys, it was fucking Groundhog Day. Middles are going at him, bang, get ripping into the Knights. And then the, the backs would come in. 
Then they got a sneaky little penalty and that's when the boys were like, all right. I feel good now. Pull off, let's get some shape. <laughs> Big boys, now you deserve it. You can get back into the game. Yeah. Aiden Tolman crosses for the first try. That's a perfect example. And it wasn't like easy, or like coming later in the half too. Yeah, because mm. they'd fucking earn it. They went through them. They are going against a fucking really strong win. So, um, yeah, so impressed. Um, got Everyone's playing really well. Sifatelikai. Is he a centre now? He's a centre, man. <laughs> he's got to stay in the centres because he's that one last little piece. Well, that, that position was the one last little piece. I know Moisa was high on Mulatalo playing centres for him because he had a really good off-season where he was swapping in when... But he's still an elite um, winger, eh, Mulatalo? What's his, sorry, what's the... the Connor kid? Tracy? Connor Tracy, who, unfortunately, I love Connor Tracy, but he's a fucking gun 14 for him, so... they've that got a makes luxury, him better. They've got a luxury. It makes them even better. And Talakai out there is a problem. He's like a... He's just like another big Moses Sully out there, you mm. know, and... Gags, man. Gags had a Gags had a few shots at him. Gags is an, a Queensland fucking Australian elite rep, center. elite center. Um, yeah, he got dusted a couple of times. Mortalo did a really good good job. Dropped uh, dropped off just off the back of uh, Sifatalakai, giving him uh, a little bit more to, uh, room to make up and and make the tackle. And if he didn't, Mortalo, man, fucking no bias because he just come in as well. But he makes really good decisions for a winger as well. I've, He's a really, I think he's an underrated winger in the NRL competition because he does. I think th- he cares about football. When I when I look when I look at Mulatalo, there's not one thing he makes really good reads and attack. He did really good yardage carries, really good finish. Same as Sione Katoa, actually. To be fair, um, I think they're probably the most underrated wing combination in the competition for sure. Yeah, because I think a lot of times we look at their flashy brilliance and we're yeah. like, oh, they don't do the basic stuff. Like usually it's one or the other. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So um, I think they do the basic stuff really well. All Safe rounders. under a hive ball. Fucking yeah, good defenders, strong carry. So really good wingers. Yeah. Um, yeah, the thing I like about the Sharks is like they've still got their identity of, and I know coaches like Fitzgibbon and Trent Robinson, they, they attach themselves to the area and they want to build it around there. I think they still have got their Cronulla identity in terms of being tough dudes. And, but they, they, don't, they don't really have that, all right, we'll score two, we'll let you score one, let's win this 6 8. They're happy to defend it and then go out and, and load some points up on the team. And I think that's been the massive change from Cronulla yep. that I've They're seen ruthless. from in the past. They're ruthless, mate. Yeah. yeah. And when, they, when they've got the foot on the throat, they don't let it up and they want to score more points, which is fucking mad. And that's the difference between probably of the past where they'd five tackle sets, do a bomb to the corner and defend it. You know, right. defend that 8 0 lead. I got high on the Sharks. He's about to dampen the mood here. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry about this. The, the Tigers, obviously, big news. And this is when you got to know a sign of a, of a shit club is when news starts to leak out to the media. Jackson Hastings, obviously, not playing at the moment, wanted to go out with the team. Bought his own flight and room, which I don't mind. Do you, do you mind that? No, I like it from him. Like, I like it from him, but why did like what? How does that get out yeah, though? Does yeah. it, is he is he is he telling people? I or? don't know. I don't know. So that's a that's a big concern from whether it's the player, whether it's the club. From so not, he, he spent about a thousand bucks to go up and watch the boys. So I don't mind that. Yeah, fucking know. It's a good teammate in a way, and then you know like go hold the pads. With yeah, the you're boys right. Half but time. fuck, get in the box, sit behind the coach. Yeah, you don't all, like that. All, do you? all the great. No, nah, I just some some people. Um, they deserve it. Um, but yeah, but with the with the Tigers, whew, fuck. Is this one of those ones where, you know, when you have a really shit loss and you go into video and the coach goes, don't worry about video, boys, we'll just go, should we just half skip the Tigers on there's this gonna one? There's going to be a fair few of them this year, man. Like, there's... Oh, there's this, I, I wrote down, the only thing I wrote down out of that game, obviously having a giggle about the fucking Channel 9 commentary, <laughs> so like, <laughs> the Tigers' shape is just so predictable. Like everyone runs, basically all teams run the same shape to a degree. It's a bit of a copycat league. People will implement their own little variations, finesses and variations yeah. on on a few plays. But the Tigers, man, it's like same sort of thing. And, and Titans aren't the best team defensively. Like you know they can leak points against the Warriors and Eels, and they were just doing it easy. Like and the, at no point when they scored that try at the end do I think the Tigers were going to win the game. <laughs> I'm just I'm watching Paul Madge and like I just feel bad for him at this point. Like yeah. I'm watching I'm watching that game going. I don't care. I've got no um, uh, invested interest in this game. I couldn't care less who wins out of the Titans and Tigers. After watching the first three rounds, I don't think either are going to be a genuine contender. So it's like not like it matters. And I was like, Tigers going to lose this game for sure. <laughs> And there was like <laughs> this is 90 long. seconds to go when they were up. And then I think, did they... Is this round five? Did they take that penalty? Did they take... Did oh, is they, this round five? Yeah. <laughs> they got another 20 rounds to go, bro. Fuck. This is going to be a long, long year for the boys, man. It'd be hard to, it'd be, hard to be a Tigers fan, man. <laughs> 
Well, I actually feel so sorry for him that it's almost funny. Bro, because there's, there's, some, there's some talented players in there and, man, fucking, we just come back to it. Like, <laughs> Brooksy needs to change bad. Yeah, Brooksy, apparently, needs, apparently Brooksy, Brooksy can be a player somewhere else, but it's just not going to be at the Tigers. Mm. All right. Um, obviously, Sharks get it done. We'll just skip that. Bulldogs versus Panthers. Simi's going to be there at the ground. So, you guys have free at the ground to support YKTR Sports. <laughs> obviously, been a little bit down. The Doggies have been struggling a bit lately. We'll go on the dog's performance first. Obviously, he got touched up from the storm. Nilled. Yeah. Is that an issue? With it's, the, it's with not the players great. that they got? There's more there in the Bulldogs, but they're more in there than the Bulldogs and the Tigers. They just don't have that halves. They don't have the halves to get them around. Kyle Maddie, Flanagan back in. Kyle, I feel like he's been thrown to the fucking pack here. This is... Like, I'm happy for Flano to get back in there. I reckon he's going to make him better. We'll see. We'll see. Well, <laughs> this is to, the be Panthers. Fair, to be fair, it can't be any worse. Playing the Panthers? No, 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 no. Like, just if you if you take away the Panthers and you look I'm at the Bulldogs' yet. performance, okay. yeah. I reckon they're going to be better than what they have been for the other two halves there, respectfully. But I think B- B- Panthers are going to oh, be better yeah, than what yeah. the fucking Storm are going to toss at him. So it's going to be just as ugly or uglier for them. Um, Bulldogs have a crack. That's there's, They do. They, yeah. they have a crack. That's the difference between them and the Tigers. I think players at times have a crack for the Tigers. Collectively, the Bulldogs have a bit more of a go in certain areas so. yeah, in, the, in yeah. the middle and, and on the edges. Like, they just, like I said, the, they were attacking the, the line for the first 10 to 15 minutes and I was like, fuck, there's nothing. There's nothing here. They're not going to, there's no way they're going to score. Um, Melbourne Storm weather the storm as they do because they're the fucking, you know, they're the pinnacle with Penrith at the moment and then they just go bang, try. Mm. And then once once the floodgates open, that's when you start seeing boys that, you see, this is round four. This is what I'm talking about in round four. When I, I've said this for the last couple of years. Round four, new players come in. So fresh energy, Bulldogs are fucking, you know, down the bottom for the last couple of years, but fucking Travita Pangai comes in and Josh Adokar comes in and Matt Big energy, Bird, yeah. And all the boys are stuck going, fuck, where the grouse? Happened to me at Parra. <laughs> <laughs> we looked around, we got fucking Simon Willie Tonga, Randy Matur comes in, I'm going, we're, we're going to be, here, we're gonna be the Bulldogs of 04, let's yeah. go, baby. And then after round four, those same players, and I'm not saying the boys are doing this, so for the, I'm just saying this is the mindset, this is why you start to rig it after, after round four. Players start looking around going, fuck, I shouldn't have left. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, or then, and then there's the, and then there's the opposite effect. I left Parra, I go to Manly, I'm fucking round four, and I'm going, fuck, this is the grouse. Like, mm. we're going to win every game. Like, and, 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 it's, and it has a trickle effect. And even it does though, create spite there too. Even though you don't say it out loud, you can read it in people's faces where like, they're just, you're looking at guys that have not been in this position before. Yeah. And they're looking at and they're looking at them, you know, like you can see in their eyes, like there's nothing there. They're just fucking lost. I remember Normie talking about Chucky Watmore <laughs> when he first came over to power and they played Manly. Yeah. And right, he was trying to, do, like, you know how Manly play, yeah. they tip it on from everywhere. So yeah. Chucky's first game against Manly, all the build up, he was just trying to do tip ons. Yeah. And like, Normie's hand like, yeah, Normie's going, bro, you're not playing the fucking 12 rep players anymore. Like, pull <laughs> <laughs> He's going, bro, pull it back. Yeah. He goes, wow, the ball should be on. Should yeah. be like, He's like, no, you're not fucking playing with that stack side anymore. Yeah, Ch- I used to run a few of those off Chalky and they were fucking pretty er- erratic, but because it, Ch- because it was Chalky, I'd just fucking run that line for him <laughs> and fucking cop one. But then, because you just knew he was going to make fucking 40 tackles and fucking 25 hit-ups and eventually, like, he, he could bust you from fucking 40 out. And, one, of the, one of the great builds for footy, eh? Oh, <laughs> fuck, bro. He was, he was the... Prototypical lock of those days, like where you didn't need to be, like we talked about his ball playing, it wasn't top shelf like <laughs> Isaiah yelling there. But what he did was he kept on relentless. He would come at you, like you look at what they're missing now in the middle. Um, one of the biggest things when I watch him and I think about the time that I was there is like the line speed that Gifty and Chocky used to have, just fucking at you all the time. And hey, Johnny but, Bravo, remember Johnny Bravo? The yeah. cards <laughs> just really big through the like frame, but like had really like small legs, but they could just go all yeah. day. Fuck, he's a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Panthers, obviously really good performance last week. Nathan Clary comes back into the fold. They start rolling into it. I think um, I think they'll be up for this game still, like even though it is the Bulldogs. It's Sunday, like, I think they'll still be up for this game. I think Ivan will get him up for this game. Yep. Not, I don't know what his relationship with Barrett is. I don't think there's any tension there. I'm just making it up. But it'd, I it'd think he'll want to nice. smack him. Yeah, fucking if he'd want to smack him. Kick has gone there. Maddie, Gus. Gus is Maddie, there. Maddie Burton's gone over. The Gus effect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jordan Simmy, you better be fucking getting those boys <laughs> fucking amped up on the mic on the MC because they're going to need it this weekend. I re- Nath, Nath Cleary put up a post and I read it's a bad <laughs> week to be a Bulldog. <laughs> it's a bad week. Uh, mate, uh, so the, there, are, there are so many things we can talk about. 
uh, performances, guys like Talon May, who is... Yeah, he's, he's, I've he's seen had two, a quiet start to his career. I've seen two games this year and I go, Brian Tito's coming back. He's replacing Charlie Stones on the right wing for me. Yep. Straight away, straight off the bat. I don't know if it happens, but that, that's just my opinion. Um, to be fair, Charlie Stane had a start to his career very similar. Charlie Stane's is nice, bro, but he just keeps having these fucking freaks developing at Penrith that are just a touch better than him. Like, he's going to offer more. It's fucking Brian Toto 2.0, fucking mm. Taylor May. Mm. Um, so, some of those effort, efforts, ducking underneath, copping a kick in the face and still scoring. Uh, he's fucking a real player of the future. They bred us tough out there. <laughs> You claiming it now, Western Sydney? Yeah, it's living Glenmore Park, maybe in your little area. Um, yeah, I wrote down. We're witnessing a dynasty. Um, I'm, Ooh, I've, I've thought about it. I've thought about. It. Yeah, yeah. What, what's class as a dynasty though? That says uh, we're win- they're, oh, they're going to go back to back. This gonna, year? Yeah, distant second. I have them. I, have, I reckon you have to get three in a row to have say a dynasty. Two, two will help. Two, two will get them on that. Yeah, two is one closer to three. Yeah, two, <laughs> two will get there, and that's what I think they're going to do this year. When I look at that team. Um, because I have South's top four, like even despite where they are, nah. South South will fight their way back inward as as the year goes on. Nah. Clip this up, please, Lukey. Thank you as a, for the end of the season. Uh, but Penrith are just so good, man. They're just so good, and uh, like I said, Simi, make sure you're doing your best work on Sunday night because they're going to need it. Will Simi turn up? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's flaky. He's, he's flaky. fucking flaky. Bulldogs fan. You've got to watch out, man. Oh, that's... no, he will because he's getting paid for it. That's, that's, you know what he's about. Yeah, he's all about that, Bunsen. He's <laughs> going to need some of that fucking puppy power to get, get himself all pumped up for this game because, yeah, Sunday night, the Sunday games are big scores incoming. Big yeah. scores uh, incoming. Oh, we'll talk about this on PB&J. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. YKTR Sports. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment. Make sure you subscribe. So we'll see you guys next time. See you next time, baby. Alright guys, oh, fucking man. That was a good show, bro.